right, class flips on the board. Take just a couple moments to work on this. Pause the video while you work. And when you're finished, go ahead and resume the video. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at our answers here for uh, this first function of x, 2x squared negative 5x plus 7. We're supposed to find f of 3. And uh, Jamie, what did you get for f of 3? 10. 10. We're going to do the 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18. 5 times the 3 is 15. 18 minus 15, of course, 3 plus the 7 then gives us 10. So you also have f of 3 is 10. Then for f of x minus 2, what do we have to do, Quentin? We're going to x minus 2 the other way. So here we're going to end up having to square, square it and then distribute the to get um, 2x squared minus 8x plus 3. There we go. x squared minus 4x plus 4 with the 2 distributed. Then here we're just going to have to distribute the negative 5, the negative five to get negative 5x five plus 7. And then of course we have the plus 7 at the end. By the way, this isn't that different from plugging in something like a delta x plus x, plugging in a binomial into a particular spot, right? So uh, one of the reasons I wanted you over the last couple of days to work on binomials being plugged in, get you ready for that, uh, what we looked at yesterday. And then the simplified answer, of course, Quentin, is 2x squared minus 13 x plus 25. There we go, Jamie, good to go on that one also. Uh, for this next, we have a limit. As x approaches 3 of x squared negative 4x, what should I do here, Jamie? Um, plug in the 3 and get 9, and then plug in there and get negative 12, so it'll be negative 3. Yeah, just plug it in. Could we use the limiting process? Sure, but we don't want to, right? I mean, we understand how the limiting process works, which is good. We don't want to do that. We don't have to. We're lazy. Just plug it in and get negative 3. The next one, though, Quentin. Do you want to backwards for the um, numerator? Why don't we just plug it in? Because you yeah, and it was a 0 over 0 if I just straight plugged it in, so I can't do that. My options are either good, factor and cancel, or synthetically divide. The factoring seems to me to be the easiest way, so I like your approach. And, of course, that allows us to cancel the x minus 3s. And now I can just plug in the 3 like I wanted to all along, and I just get 2. Did you have that for that one? All right, questions on these. Now, yesterday we began talking about uh, slope. And of course, in general, slope is what over what class? Rise over run. For a straight line, that's really easy. Pick any two points on the line. Whatever the rise and run is, that's the slope of the line. It never changes. But for a curve, remember, you can't really define the slope of a curve because, well, it's curved. So we said the slope of a curve constantly changes. At any given point, there's a different slope. But how would we express the slope at a specific point on a curve? Either of you? The perpendicular. Not the perpendicular, but the, oh, the tangent. tangent. That's why you said perpendicular. You were thinking tangent implies perpendicular to radius, right? But the slope of the tangent line. And so at any given point on a curve, the slope will be different depending on the slope of the tangent at that particular point. And we said, well, in that case, we're going to have the limit of change in y rise over change in x as those limits approach 0. Because you pick any two points on a curve far apart, that line's going to be different from the slope of the tangent. But if the two points are literally on top of each other, which would make them the same point, so we couldn't have that, but if they were, right? If that change in x and change in y approach 0, then the slope of that little tiny infinitely non-existent line segment would be the same as the slope of the tangent line. So we then kind of extrapolated some things out. We said we really don't need change in y and change in x going to 0. Just the change in x going to 0 is sufficient. And we uh, kind of reformatted some things to get a pretty elaborate equation here for the slope of the tangent line. It was the limit as delta x approaches 0 for, you copied it three times for homework, I'm going to say, I'm pretty sure it was plus x. Minus f of x1. Now, initially, we did have x1s, where we would plug in a specific value, and we'd solve. And then I said, but, man, that gets tiresome. Plugging in one value after another value after another value, wouldn't it be easier if we just used a generic x? In which case, instead of getting a numeric answer, 
you would actually get an equation at the end. So if we took some function of x, for instance, I think that earlier we had a 2x squared minus 5x plus 7, is that right? Instead of saying, okay, well, at this exact point, what is the slope? Which we could do, plug in the point here for the x's, and all over, by the way, delta x, right? And uh, as you figure the limit, you would get a numeric answer. That would be the slope. But then if you wanted to slope at another point, you have to plug that in and keep redoing it. By using an x, you would actually get an equation, which we would indicate as being f prime of x. This equation we would end up with would be called the first derivative. First derivative. Whatever equation you come up with after using generic x's is called the first derivative. So this is my formula to find that first derivative. If I can spell the word correctly. The first derivative equation is this, or formula is this, which gives me the first derivative function of any other function. And we were working on that yesterday. Page 314, number 1c was your homework. Go ahead and have your books out open at page 314. Go ahead and have 1c out. And uh, let's take a look at how we did on that function. We were given f of x is equal to x squared negative 6x positive 3. And we were trying to find the first derivative equation using the formula. And let's say it together here, class. Slope of the tangent equals the limit as delta x approaches 0 for f of delta x plus x minus f of x all over delta x. And so we're going to go ahead and set that up here. The slope of the tangent, or first derivative, is going to equal the limit as delta x approaches 0 for, we give ourselves a nice big space, oh, something all over delta x, right? And then we're going to take f of delta x plus x. Well, that means that right here, we put a delta x plus x. Right here, we put a delta x plus x. So when I plug it in right here, what do I get, Jane? Um, I'm trying to find it. I have delta x plus x squared. Okay, initially, yeah, delta x. We could, we could just say it that way, and that's fine. Delta x plus x squared minus 6 delta x plus x plus 3. We could do it that way and then simplify the next step. I'm fine with that. I was trying to do all of it at once, but maybe that's being greedy. Maybe that's not helping people watching on YouTube. So we'll, we'll roll with it, right? Uh, and then, of course, it says minus f of x. Well, obviously, that's f of x. So minus all of that all over delta x, right? So if we don't do any simplifying, this is how it would look. Now, if we did do some simplifying, we'd have the limit as delta x approaches 0. And maybe it's also just as well, because I got a lot of room here. <laughs> uh, when I square the binomial, uh, what do I get, Jane? Delta x squared plus 2x delta x plus x squared. Um, and then when we distribute the negative 6 quintin, And of course, we have this random plus 3. It was at the end, it didn't have any x's in it. And then we've got this negative in front of the whole f of x, Jamie, which gives me... Negative x squared plus 6x minus 3. All right, so we square the binomial. We distribute. We keep the positive 3, and then we change all the signs. Now we get to cancel, and I told you everything is going to cancel that doesn't have delta x. If it doesn't have a delta x in it, it better cancel. And in fact, we can cancel class the three. the 3 and the negative 3, the x squared and the negative x squared, the negative 6x and the positive 6x. And sure enough, everything that's left has a delta x, which means since I'm dividing by delta x, I can just divide that away. Move this out of your way. That's going to give me the limit as delta x approaches 0 of what non-fractional leftover, Quentin? But since delta x approaches 0, that means we're going to put a 0 where it says delta x. So my answer is just. And that's the first derivative of the function. f prime of x equals 2x minus 6. Did you get that last night by any chance? I still have delta x plus 
Okay, so you didn't actually evaluate the limit as delta x equals right. zero. Right, I did other evaluation, but I didn't do that. Gotcha, but does that make sense? You Because, right, if I said the limit as a approaches 2 of a negative 5, you would say it's negative 3. Negative 3, because you plug the 2 in, right? Same thing here. The, now, I couldn't plug it in right here because there's a zero denominator. I had to wait till it was gone from the denominator. Now I can plug the zero in, and that's all that's left. That makes sense? Now, that was the first part of the problem, was to find the slope of the tangent, the first derivative, but we specifically wanted, what is the slope when x is negative 3, when x is 0, and when x is 3? In other words, this is how you're going to see it expressed. Find f prime of negative 3. Find the first derivative, slope of the tangent, when x is negative 3. So what does first derivative mean, class? Slope of the tangent line. That's what the first derivative is. It's the slope of the tangent line. So we wanted f prime of negative 3, 0, and 3. Well, coming back here, what is f prime of negative 3, class? Negative 12. Negative 12. Very steep negative slope. f prime of 0, still a pretty significant negative slope, though not as steep. And for the f, of, f prime of 3, Ah, so right at this point, perfectly horizontal slope. Questions on number 1C. And Quentin, you said you got it? No. Did not got it. Okay, but it makes sense now? Or it makes better sense now, let's put it that way. All right, better sense now? Yeah, even if it doesn't make perfect sense now, we got a few more of these we're going to practice here. So let's, um, let's do another couple of these together. Make sure we've got this process figured out. Let's take uh, f of x equals x cubed, the basic cubic function. Remember, that's the one that's going to do uh, that thing. Kind of like the tangent curve, but a little bit more pronounced in the middle than the tangent curve is. And let's suppose I want to know the first derivative of the function, and I specifically want the slope of the tangent when x equals, and let's find lots of different slopes here. When x is 0, when x is 1, when x is 2, let's do a couple of negatives as well. So there's five different points at which I want to know the slope. If there were only one point, I might as well just plug in that number. When there's more than one point, you might as well leave the x. Make sense? So let's go ahead and find this first derivative. Well, we want the limit, class, as delta x approaches 0 for f of delta x plus x minus f of x all over delta x. So I need the limit as delta x approaches 0 for, and we're going to, you notice I'm getting a lot of room here, because i got to find f of delta x plus x, which means right here, class, I've got to plug in delta x plus x. I've got to cube the binomial. Do you remember Pascal's triangle? We've seen it a couple times, I feel like, this year, including once recently. You remember this? Yeah, so we're going to go with this row right here. Do this with me. There are your seats. We're going to start with a 1, 3, 3, 1. That's how we cube a binomial. Then we're going to start with the first term of the binomial, which is the delta x cubed. Then it's going to be squared, then it's going to be the first, and then it's going to be gone. Coming back to you. Then we're going to take the second term of the binomial, the x. It's going to start out gone. Then x to the first, x squared, x cubed. So far, so good. And then, because it's a positive, all of them are going to be positive. If it were negative, they would alternate. But it's a positive, so they're all positive. That's f of delta x plus x. Then we need to subtract f of x. Well, that's actually really easy, class. Minus x cubed. Because that's f of x. Minus f of x, minus that. So far, so easy. All over delta x. Remember I told you if it isn't a delta x, it must cancel because we have to be able to divide everything by the delta x later. And sure enough, the only things that aren't delta x's cancel away. Which means, Jamie, everything at the top can be divided by the 
Okay. Which is going to cause my denominator to uh, vanish. That's a better word. The be gone works as well. Especially if it's said it is a, it is a directive. Be gone! Anyway, um, so we're going to take the limit as delta x approaches 0, Jamie, of a non-fraction now. Um, delta x squared, um, 3 delta x, then um, 3x squared. There we go. But we want the limit as delta x approaches 0. And with a limit, as long as there's no fraction, we just plug it in. We just plug in the 0. Thoughts? We plug in the zero. Thoughts? Zero. There's nowhere to plug it in there. So what's the limit as delta x approaches zero? 3x three three squared. That's the first derivative. Make sense? Mm -hmm. Starting to get a better feel for this now. We only got to look at a couple yesterday. You tried one for homework. We're doing it more. Starting to really get a feel for the process. So what is the slope when x equals zero? Zero. zero. What's the slope when x equals 1? 3. Three. Plug it in here to the first derivative. What about when x is a 2? Then what's the slope? 12. What about if x is negative 1? What's the slope? Three. Still 3. What about when uh, the slope is negative 3? 27. 27. Notice all positive slopes always going upward, right? Well, that's what the cubic does. It always goes up. It never goes backward. So it makes sense? Questions on that? Let's, uh, let's do this guy here. Let's do this guy here as our function this time. And let's find the first derivative. Again, I'm going to find five different slope points. find f prime of x. So, we're going to want the limit as delta x approaches 0 for, Jamie, what do I do? Um, you know, when it's complex like this, it probably is best not to try to do too many steps in our head. So I don't mind the plug in as its own step because squaring and di distributing a 2 probably leads us to problems. Um, negative 5 times um, delta x plus x. And this plus 7. And then. So negative f of x of b. Um, this mean that negative 2 x squared plus 5 x minus 7. All right, she figured, I can do that step in my head easily. Now, all I'm doing is changing sides. I don't mind doing that in my head. All over, of course. Delta x. Delta x. All right, so now we're going to expand some things out. And Jamie's also like, well, if I don't, tell, that means Quentin will have to. <clears throat> Should we let her get away with this, Quentin? He's like, I got this. I'm cool. Go ahead. All right, what do we got? All right, so square is delta x times square times 2, 2 delta x squared. Or is 4 delta x, x. Right, multiply and double is 2x delta x, double is 4x delta x. Or 4 delta x, x is fine as well. Plus 2x squared. Squared is x squared times 2 is 2x squared. I got, I got this in my head. Nine, All right. Minus 5 delta x minus 5x. All right, all over. Yeah, I fit that one just perfect. All right, and then Jamie. We can cancel any like terms, so okay. we can cancel any the two x squares, the five x's, the sevens. By the way, however many terms are in the original should be how many terms you end up having to cancel away, or pairs of terms, I should say, you end up having to cancel away. And then... Then we divide... By the... Um, what's that? To get... To delta x plus 4x minus 5. 
There we go. And so what is the first derivative? Quentin? Because when you evaluate the zero, that makes that become a zero, and it just leaves you with 4x negative 5. And that's my first derivative. Were you doing this with me? Did I tell you to do it with me? It would have been good to do it with me. We understand it at least. All right. Because um, you're going to try the next one on your own. <laughs> All right, we, we feel like we understand. You seem like as you were dictating it, you feel like we were getting the hang of it. Okay, so what is the slow, first derivative, when x is 0, class? What's the slope when x is 1? The slope when x is 2. The slope when x is negative 1. And the slope when x is negative 3. And we can see how the slope is fluctuating here. We got negative slope, a little bit of a positive slope, and then back to some more negative slope here. So, uh, yeah, very, uh, very interesting there. I have questions on that. Wait, 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 wait. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. I'm trying to picture the function here. And doing a poor job of it. Looking at it for a second. Because I got negative slope, which means it's going downward. And then suddenly it goes positive and it's back to negative again. I wouldn't have thought of quadratic function, which should be a parabola, right? A parabola could do that. Oh! That's why these are not in numerical order. These are on this side. If we were going in order, this is negative three, then this, then this, then this, then this. Okay, never mind. I'm like, that's really weird. <laughs> okay, it's somewhere in between here that the curve goes from going down to going up. Okay, sorry, my my brain was not reconciling these answers were correct, but I was I was booking it as if these numbers were in numerical order and they are not. Pardon the lull there. Sorry, YouTube. All right, questions on this. All right, this is the downside of knowing where this is going, is I'm able to check things and then I get my brain all twisted up. On a Friday, page 314, do number 1D. I was hoping to fit this in last, yesterday, did not have time. Let's go do page 314, number one, letter D.
right, students, and you're finished. If you are watching on YouTube and you are not finished yet, take just a moment longer to work. Let's go and take a look at uh, number one, letter D. We have f of x is equal to a negative 3x squared, positive 6x, negative 5. All right, we want to find the first derivative so that we can find the slope at negative 3, the slope at 0, and the slope at positive 3. To find the slope of the tangent line, or to find the first derivative, we're going to use what formula class? The slope of the tangent equals the limit as delta x approaches 0 for f of delta x plus x minus f of x all over delta x. All right, so we need the limit as delta x approaches 0. All right, we need to take the delta x plus x, square it, and distribute a negative 3. All right, Jamie, you've chickened out twice. You are not getting out of it this time. I want you to square and distribute the negative 3 as you can. Oh, she's, she, she's looking at the work. Come on, Jamie, you can do this. Square the first, multiply negative 3. Um, and so it's just going to be negative 3 um, delta x squared. Multiply and double. And you go 2x delta x. So but times the negative 3. Negative 6 x delta x. And then square and multiply the negative 3. Negative 3x. Three See, you look at that confidence. Okay. And then, um, then it says minus f of x. So, Quentin. Oh, no, we're not done. We're not done. We're not done. Oh, I almost, almost did pull a bad one there. That's only right here. We still got a point. I was like, something's not right. What is it? That's what's not right. We're not done. We got to now distribute a 6. Jamie. Um, 6 delta x plus 6x. And of course. Yeah, minus 5. Minus 5. Now we need more room. <laughs> but now we are ready for the minus f of x, Quentin. Plus 3 is squared minus and then Jamie? And then we're going to cancel the fives. Okay. And the six x and the three squared. Three x squared, okay. And then Quentin? To get? So, Jamie, what is the first derivative? The first derivative is negative 6x plus 6. Perfect. Did we get that first derivative? Outstanding. Now we need to find the slope at negative 3, class. 24. The slope at 0. 6. And the slope at 3. Negative 12. And some extreme slopes. Those are all really steep slopes, two positive and then one negative. Questions on this? All right, let's take a look at 1e. E. 1e. E.
<laughs> Jamie's shaking her head. Isn't this thing annoying? Yeah. Okay, stop where you're at. Stop where you're at. Um, let me show you how this thing uh, works out here. And uh, so this, uh, I'm not sure how well my YouTube viewers can see this. Quentin's like, no, I'm going to get it. I'm almost there. Quentin, don't look then. Uh, but people who want to check it out and Jamie, uh, <laughs> this is the work that it takes to go from the function to the derivative. I was getting there. Oh, wait. And I'm not sure how well this is viewable. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take the liberty of uh, taking a camera down for the cameras, for the, uh, sorry, for the, uh, Easier said than done. There we go. Pause the video real quick so don't stop shaking. Quentin, um, how'd you do? Did you get those? Uh, did you get that first derivative? Six x squared positive six x negative twelve. And so the three slopes were twenty four negative twelve and sixty. Great job. Look at letter. Uh, look at letter F. Look at letter F. Isn't that abjectly horrifying? Yeah, I thought Yeah, and, and we're like, but well, wait a second, Mr. Nadasky. I thought mathematicians were lazy. What is this nonsense you call calculus? I am terrified of college calculus right now. And can you imagine? I mean, f of x equals 5x to the fourth. 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. And then you plug it in the delta x cubed to the four, delta x to the fourth, delta x cubed, delta, and then of course it gets on like negative seven x squared. Can you imagine? There's got to be an easier way, right? Every time in math, every time in physics, something seems just stupid hard. You're like, there is a shortcut. There has got to be a shortcut because that's what a mathematician does. He finds shortcuts, and there is. Let's look at some things. Let me turn this off right now. But uh, let, let's look at some things for just a minute here. Remember earlier in the hour, we looked at the uh, function of x is x cubed. Now, I don't have the answer written down here. But I know, I remember it was 3x squared. You might remember that's what it came out to. Earlier in the hour, we had a function of x is, uh, was it 2x squared, negative 5x, positive 7. I don't remember it, but I can do it in my head. It was 4x negative 5. Just now, uh, we had, what was the function here? f of x is equal to a 2x cubed positive 3x squared negative 12x positive 6. And uh, the first derivative was a 6x squared plus 6x negative 12. I can do it in my head. So can you, but I want to see if you can figure out the pattern here. Get rid of the highest power. Yeah. You do what? You get rid of the highest power. Of the okay, yeah, the, in the derivative, the power goes down. Okay, the leading power drops. Then you double it, then half it, then double it. And then half it, double it, huh? You double what? You double the um, numerical value. So I double the two? Or you half it and double it. And I half, half this and double? No. Hey, at least he's trying. Jamie just sitting there laughing. She's not even trying. You get the f of x prime because the 6x squared is double the three x squared is Oh, I see. So this doubles. Oh. That, but it also changed a sign, too. It but seems like. Right. Does that, well, does that, wait a second, there's nothing there. All right, let's see what's the And so here, hmm. okay, so it's an idea, right? It's not a bad attempt, right? And that's what a mathematician does. He tries to find patterns, and that just happens not to be it. But this, hey, that wasn't a bad try. Okay, Jamie's turn. <laughs> what he said. Um, what he, no, what he said didn't work. You, already, you said so yourself. I don't know. Let's see. Full 
And that one, like, they're very subversive line too, but you don't have anything divisible over there. Yeah. Um, um, Let me tell you what the, what the derivative, I'm going to go up since I ran myself out of room here, but the derivative here would be a 20x cubed negative 14x if that helps. Well, that's times the 4 times the 2. Times the 4? And then the power drops. So I multiply to get the 6, drop the power. Multiply to get the 6, drop the power. Multiply the 1, and that gives me the negative 12. And the power drops to nothingness. And this already had a nothing power, so if you multiply, it would technically give you a 0 anyway. You were not, we were on to something here. There's the 4, and now it's just an x. There's the 1 times negative 5 is negative 5, and the x is gone. And since that had a 0 power, it's completely gone as well. Here, 3 times the 1 gave us the 3, and we dropped the power. And that's the quick way to find a derivative. Okay? So, um, so for instance, if we looked at, um, if we looked at letter F, Without the short method, the shortcut, man, that thing's got to be a pain, right? Uh, it, looks, it looks positively horrifying. But if we use the short method, make sure I'm still on the screen, oh yeah, I've got plenty of room, then when we find the first derivative, I'm going to multiply the existing coefficient, which right now the coefficient is one third, I'm going to multiply a third times three. Three thirds, right? Or one, and then the power drops. Right now I've got a negative three halves. Multiply that by two. Negative six halves or negative three, and then the power drops to an x to the first. What is technically the power here? X to the zero, right? So what happens to the two? It's just gone. So practically speaking, if it's a constant, it disappears because its power is its x's power is zero. By the way, I could take a derivative of a derivative. I could take a derivative again. What would the derivative be now, Jamie? Um, two x minus three x negative three. Negative three, because one times negative three would be negative three. By the way, I could take a derivative of this. What would that be, Quentin? Two. Just two. Could I take a derivative of that? So interestingly, I can take three derivatives when it's cubed. What would be the derivative of this? We call it the second derivative class. Two. And what would be the third and final derivative? Six. What would be the second derivative here? Four. Four, the constant drops. Notice two derivatives, it was only squared. So here, because it starts at fourth, I could actually take four derivatives. Now, we're not going to actually use more than two. There's applications for first and second derivatives, which we'll get to in future lessons. But uh, yeah, technically, the highest power tells you how many derivatives. It also tells you how many roots. How many roots also tells you how many derivatives you could take. Again, we're not going to need more than two of them. We're going to practice more of that in our next lesson, though. I'm not going to give you any homework. Now, you are not going to have to, on a quiz or test, ever use that equation you learned. We practiced it so you'd appreciate the short method and you'd understand the ideology behind it. Right? It's not just, oh, do this. Well, why? Well, you know why. You know how slope works. We understand the idea of the limit. You have to have it memorized to be able to regurgitate it on a quiz or test, but you're not going to have to use it. From this point forward, if there's a derivative, you ain't doing that. You're going to do the short method every single time, because after all, mathematicians are lazy. All right, no homework. We'll pick this up in our next lesson. Have a wonderful rest of your day, a wonderful weekend.